In the eternal conflict between the high heavens and the burning hells, Diablo 4 offers you more choice than ever before. Player choice is infused into everything, from how you look, the skills you use, the loot you equip, your path through the non-linear story, to how and when you choose to explore the shared open world. We want players to play their own way and have their own choice of how they're going to build their character. Between all of our different systems, you can really create a custom character in ways that was not available in previous Diablo titles. When you log into Diablo 4, the first thing you're going to have to do is create your character. And those familiar with Diablo are going to be very familiar with the screen with all the classes sitting around the campfire. In Diablo 4, we got five classes. The Barbarian is your fantasy of a fierce warrior or fighter. The Barbarian's the weapon master of Diablo 4, being able to pick up any weapon, jump into the fray, and do really badass stuff with it. They're very strong, they're very physical. They can take different weapons for different situations and use them to their maximum effect. The Sorcerer is really your elemental mage. You have fire, ice, lightning. You can either focus on one or you can kind of be a jack of all trades mage and use abilities from all three. They're a little more fragile than other classes, tend to be more ranged. The rogue, unlike the barbarian, they are a little bit more clever. They're very fast. They have the ability to imbue their weapons with different elemental energies, and they can modify them to do different things. The rogue has two different types of play styles. You have the ranged crossbow type gameplay, or you have the in-your-face daggers, poisons. You can lead the enemies into traps that have huge effects, more stealthy type gameplay. And the druid is really this shapeshifter. When you cast certain skills, you change your form, what you look like and what you can do. They can turn into werebears or werewolves. If I cast a werewolf skill, I turn into a werewolf and I do werewolf things. If I cast like pulverize, for example, which is a werebear skill, I turn into a werebear, I slam the ground really hard. If it's the fantasy, it's pretty cool. They can also become masters of nature magic with earth and storm magic. Last but not least, we got the Necromancer. They raise armies of the dead. They have different types of minions. You've got your skeletal warriors, your skeletal mages, and then your golem. You have blood magic or bone magic that you can also take advantage of and tackle combat that way. If you've played a previous Diablo game and you enjoyed a certain play style, you can actually bring that into Diablo 4 or just try something completely new. No matter which class you play, there's going to be multiple different avenues and fantasies that you can chase. You can customize your character in ways you've never been able to before with near endless character creation and transmog options. In previous Diablo games, you had to be attached to certain archetypes and look a certain way. And in Diablo 4, it's really up to you how you want your character to look. You'll be able to choose from different facial structures from people all over the world. No matter where you are, you'll be able to say, hey, I can actually make someone that looks like me or looks like someone from my part of the world, which we're really proud of. You can pick a hairstyle for your character, and every class actually has a specific hairstyle that no other class can use. You can pick your eye color. We have some really fun ones. We have eye glowing. We have a bloodshot type eye. And then you can actually pick a marking, which is a tattoo or a design that covers your entire character. And there are dozens of those. Transmog is the idea that you can take a piece of gear and change the appearance of it to look like a different piece of gear. As far as aesthetics, the sky is the limit. However you can think of making your character, you can make it that way. Everybody's going to look completely different in Diablo 4. One of our pillars for class design Diablo 4 is this idea that we want players to play the way that they want to. When you first start the game, we introduce you to the idea of the skill tree. As you level up, you get access to these different skills or passives or upgrades to make your character more powerful. Each category has a few different skills that are all similar. They're either all defensive or all offensive, all ice or all fire. You can either focus on a very specific section or you can pick and choose. The first skill point when you unlock a new skill is gonna give you access to that skill. After that, you can put additional points into any skill that you have and it's gonna make it better, whether it increases the radius or adds some new effect or reduces the cooldown through some special way. You can actually branch out in a very different direction Direction, even if two characters actually started at the same place. The Paragon board is a late game system that once you've completely filled out your skill tree, you think you have a build, it will really let you delve into the theory crafting and the depth of Diablo 4's skill system. And these boards, they can move through them, spending their Paragon points, and they have nodes that give them very basic stats like intellect or dexterity. We also have more powerful nodes. We have rare nodes that have different effects where they can totally modify a skill to do something additional or different, 
or they can even make new connections between skills so that players can have new ways to play their character. Legendary nodes are equivalent to legendary powers where they have more powerful effects that can change the builds and ways that characters play. You can start planning this long journey of, okay, I want to hit this node, and then I want to hit this node, and I'm going to apply this board, and I'm going to start from this side, and really just get into a super complex, very specific build for your character. Legendary items are really rare and powerful items that you're going to find as you adventure through the world of Sanctuary. We have quite a few different categories of legendaries and how they do that. Some of them will actually change your skill or enhance it in some way. Frozen Orb, for example, it might say, hey, every single time you use your Frozen Orb, it applies a new effect. And then I can actually take advantage of that new effect that it has. Even if the item itself is maybe not as good as the one you have, you can still extract that power from it, take advantage of it, and use it for your build. One thing that our players can look forward to is that a lot of our classic, really rare, and most powerful items from previous titles are going to be returning as uniques in Diablo 4. Unique items are very similar to legendaries, but they're unique, which means if that ability is actually on a chess piece, it's always going to be on that chess piece because it's more powerful than a regular legendary effect. Crafting is a big part of Diablo 4. We have all kinds of different ways that you could upgrade and interact with NPCs to make your gear better. You can increase the item level or power of your gear, so you can actually get a piece of gear and just make it stronger. You can also add sockets to your gear so that you can put gems inside of it. There are a lot of different ways that players will be able to customize their experience in Diablo 4. Every single player is going to have a different experience and a different build at the end of the day. Because we have all of these different ways to make your own character, there's a lot more possibility compared to previous titles of how you want to play, how you want to build your character. We really are doubling down on this idea that you can look the way you want, you can play the way you want, you can really make your own fantasy in this game. Hell welcomes all, and so does Diablo 4. In the coming weeks, we'll be sharing even more about how to play your way. Now, our launch on June 6th is getting closer. Closer still if you got early access. And we can't wait to see you in Sanctuary. Hail Lilith, Blessed Mother. How's it going? My name is Adam Fletcher. I'm the community lead for Diablo, and we are here for the next Diablo 4 developer update live stream. And I'm joined by this wonderful panel of people. You're overstating it, but I'm okay. overstating sure. it, yeah. but yeah. Uh, Rod Ferguson, general manager of all things Diablo. Uh, Joseph Pipora, I'm the associate game director for uh, Diablo 4. Katie Clark, director of product for Diablo 4. Awesome. Well, we have a really packed show today, and there's a lot of stuff, obviously. Uh, going on with Diablo lately. I mean, really? I'm not yeah, sure if you've nothing heard. Going on. I thought, you, didn't um, you just get back from vacation? I, I, <laughs> no, you didn't. Did I? No, I actually, I was like, I was in <laughs> Chicago like a couple of weeks ago. Was, now I'm just <laughs> lost all track of time. Uh, but we, you know, we're only, what, three, 22, 22 days. Three, two, two weeks, three weeks. I think so, I've lost all track launch? of time. Three weeks till early access. Launch. 22 days. 22 days. Oh, look, we have a wonderful See, countdown. Oh. 22 days, yeah, 20 four hours, 15 minutes, 42 seconds. Exactly, until uh, the uh, early access actually starts. So if you actually uh, uh, have early access with a deluxe version or ultimate version of Diablo 4, you will be able to play here in a little over three weeks, which is pretty <laughs> insane yeah, to it's, think it's, about. It's wild to imagine having worked this game for such a long time and then finally be able to be like, we're three weeks away. Yeah. You know, it's like every, it, it feels like, oh, we're two months away. We're two months, it, it, it constantly, it's just like, oh my God, I can't believe it's finally here. It's <laughs> almost time to play Diablo 4. But yeah. you know what we could do before launch to play Diablo 4? Um, play like server slam. Hey, yeah. hey, there we go. No, well, I was like, I, I, thought, I wasn't sure if you were gonna like throw it to me a little bit more or something like that. But but I couldn't throw it any harder. <laughs> but this is a big guy. Just, just bad uh, guys. We're just at it. <laughs> this is live, by the way. Um, uh, so yeah, we actually do have our Diablo 4 server slam. Starts on May 12th. It uh, goes through the 14th. It's another opportunity to play Diablo 4 before the launch of the game, which is great, and it helps us a ton. Mm. So uh, make sure to jump in this weekend. There's a lot to do. You can actually start uh, the early download here 
after this stream at noon today. Yep. So we'll actually have uh, early download available, and players can uh, download on Battle.net, on Xbox, and PlayStation. If you already have the beta client, uh, the beta client from the prior betas that we had beforehand, uh, those will actually just start auto-updating, and if you got rid of them, or if you want to jump in for Server Slam for the first time ever, you will have the ability to do so uh, by downloading at noon. Today. But it is a fresh start. So even it if is. you have the beta client from last time and it updates, all new characters, you're starting from level one, um, and there's like a bunch of different changes, right, Joe, in terms of how we think about Server Slam versus the previous betas? Yeah, that's right. So we made a number of changes, and we talked about a few of these in our last live stream, mm -hmm. but uh, we've gone ahead and made some adjustments to the way the dungeon objectives are laid out. Uh, we've changed some of the, uh, the dungeon flows as you're going through the, uh, the map, so we have a lot more smiling faces and fewer frowny faces as you're progressing <laughs> through. Uh, we've done some balance updates for classes to kind of like uh, adjust based on like data we saw as we're looking at like how players were actually playing and like kind of reviewing how things were actually working in the live game, uh, which is really exciting. We made some adjustments to like the drop rates. Now they're more reflective of the actual base game experience when oh, we're right. launching uh, in, the, uh, in the near future. So during the, the last beta, we had like an accelerated drop rate for legendary items. Now it's, you're going to get a sense of like what's going to really feel like in those early levels of Diablo 4 uh, to try to like, you know, fight and try to find those legendary items. Right. So actually, Server Slam will actually prove to be a little bit more challenging because uh, the lo level cap is lower. It's not 25, it's 20. So you, you max out at 20, so you have essentially five less skill points to play with. And legendaries aren't going to be raining from the sky the, the way they were during the beta. So, you know, we have this notion of getting to level 20 to get your wolf pack, but and also to try to take on a Shava. But like, a Shava is going to be more challenging than last time because of that five less skill points and not as many legendaries. So that's going to be really interesting to see if people can get to level 20 and beat a Shava. Um, so that, that's, but it's a more accurate representation. It's sort of like people talk about how does it actually feel to go from 1 to 20, and this is actually, you know, essentially the path we're, we're pretty close to what we're shipping with at launch. Uh, even the new font. We didn't talk about the new font. That's, that's true. That's, yeah, that's a, that's we, we definitely have also updated the font. <laughs> so there's, there's a lot. What we're really trying to say is there's a lot to look forward to yeah. as far as Server Slam. And importantly, please come check it out. It really is going to help us for, for launch. Make sure that we get as many players as we can, stressing out the servers and making sure that we have, uh, we have accurately estimated everything. So we're in a really great spot. So Kagan, what, are you, what uh, class are you playing in Slam? I um, only ever play rogue. I hate you to be that only person. Ever play rogue? <laughs> I only play rogue. I really like high mobility classes. So, like, you know, I want to zip around. Rogue, nice. rogue is that. Yeah. So yeah, I uh, <laughs> I got my uh, my druid up to twenty five last time, and I got a barbarian up to twenty five last time. I'm looking forward to jumping, in, I think, into a necro this time. Oh, and I got my sorceress up to twenty five last time as well. Nice. But but necro this time. I wanted to hit all five. I didn't have time to get all five this time. But this round, I want to try to get my uh, my uh, my necro up. And Adam? Oh, I don't know. Uh, I'd probably say Necromancer this time. Mm. Yeah, I did Druid and Rogue last time. Uh, and, you know, I haven't played Necromancer since way back when. So I'm just like, okay. Yes, we, sorry, we, we have played the game before <laughs> other people. <laughs> yeah. What? You have access to Diablo 4 where other people Amazing, don't? yeah. yeah. Uh, but yeah, probably Necromancer this time. I'm going to go, I think I'm going to go Druid just because, like, I'm going to Necro. So hard in the main game that I I, I don't want to like I want to save that so I'm gonna I'm gonna go druid in the slam I think. Yeah. Saying necro is a verb. It sounds like you're talking about like a thread <laughs> form somewhere. That's how you necro. Yeah, <laughs> true. God, it's so all true. The corpse explosion. Um, we hear Rod talk about necromancer all the it, time here. It's not my fault that it's the best class. I didn't design the game. You all did. All the time. It's my fault that necro is the best class. Listen, <laughs> listen, folks. We're playing Barbarian at launch. Okay? No, like, all the classes are super fun. They all have, like, interesting and different overpowered mechanics. That's, that's just the way that we want to kind of go about class generation for, uh, for Diablo 4. Yeah. So, uh, and just a reminder, like I said beforehand, it, uh, because we, we have Server Slam this weekend, and then we're a little over three weeks from... Uh, early access. Mm -hmm. uh, the Deluxe and Ultimate versions are uh, available for pre-order for uh, those uh, to, to get early access for the four days or four to maybe five days, a little bit early, like or depending on where you live. <laughs> well, I mean, it's like, still four days. It's, well, I mean, it's like, I mean, it's like <clears throat> ish. If you get in a plane, um, though. 
I'm gonna get a fly. Yeah, exactly. yeah, you might wound. get an extra couple. Thank you. <laughs> uh, <laughs> anyways, we do have a QR code up here, so you guys can actually go straight to the to the battle net shop, and it'll actually show you all the uh, different and, versions. And one of the questions we get around that is like, because we have cross play and cross progression, you know, obviously you can play in console, you can play in PC, you can play with others on console or PC, yep. and your progress carries over no matter where you are. But that's also true for things like the rewards and the incentives. So, as an example, if you were to play Server Slam on Xbox, as an example, or a PlayStation, um, and you earn the rewards for the Beta Wolf Pack or the the Cry of Ashava, like that stuff will carry over when you switch platforms. Same thing for the stuff when you buy the <laughs> Ultimate Edition, that stuff will carry over to other platforms. And so, you know, when people are like, oh, I want to buy two versions, I'm going to buy the console version and a PC version, you can buy the Ultimate in one and, and the Basic in another and, and share those rewards. Yeah, the, the, only, the only caveat, though, is that uh, early access from the Ultimate version or the Deluxe version stays on the platform that I you actually purchase. Yeah. Yeah. So, so if you uh, are wanting to play early access on PC, make sure to get the PC version and you can oh, buy like a PlayStation version or an Xbox version and actually carry over all those other incentives over between uh, different platforms. That was, so. a, that was an excellent job at fine print. You did the fine print beautifully yeah. there with a little Thank asterisk you. caveat on that. Thank you. The I, lawyers I, have asked me to I, say I, that, that you only get early access I've on the platform. I've answered that question <laughs> many times for the last couple months. So. Yes. Um, but we do have a lot to talk about today. Yes. Um, I think one of the biggest things that uh, we've been hearing from the community is the discussion around seasons mm -hmm. and how they will work in Diablo 4. Wait, that's what we're here to talk about? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's a moment. <laughs> I'm, I'm hoping you remember why we're here. I don't, yeah. I don't read any of those. I don't read that, man. Um, but uh, as we all know, like seasons are a big part of, of Diablo itself. Um, you know, we have seasons in Diablo 2, seasons in Diablo Which, 3. Season 4 on season May 4th four. for Diablo 2 Resurrected. But, and we're still season 28 on Diablo 3, yes. so rocking that out. So yeah, exciting. Yeah, so, uh, but we but seasons with Diablo 4 has been a big question because a lot of people want to know how it kind of works and like the structure of it and so forth. And thankfully, we have Joe and Kagan here to help us and talk about that. Oh, I guess Rod too. No, I'm just, but, here. <laughs> I'm just here to interrupt their flow and, and annoy them. That's my job. But uh, Joe, how do seasons in Diablo 4 work? Adam Fletcher, thank you so much for asking me. I love to talk about this for a bit. So, let's, yeah, let's talk about seasons. Um, all right, so we're going to have a helpful infographic to show you in just a second, but let me talk to you about seasons as a general rule. You know, as we're thinking about Diablo 4 and the launch product of, uh, of the game, uh, we are trying to make sure that we've got a really great experience that players are going to be able to enjoy uh, for their first, you know, character playthrough of the campaign and have an excellent, excellent experience. Uh, seasonal content, our post-launch content, is going to be arriving shortly after the launch of the base game. Mid to late July. Mid to late July, actually. That's good. Yeah, yeah, we haven't, asked, we haven't talked about that yet, but absolutely, it is mid to late July. You've heard it from Rod <laughs> Uh so, but, so that's the goal. We want to make sure that you've got enough time to play through your first character and really enjoy the campaign uh, at your own pace and kind of explore potentially different classes as you go. Uh, so when we're thinking about seasons in Diablo 4, we start off with thinking about uh, a theme, the seasonal content of that season. So we're going to have four seasons a year, uh, one per quarter, and each of these are going to have a really strong theme associated with them. And this theme is going to uh, like basically uh, inform the things we want to do with the uh, with all the content within the season, with things that might be appearing in the battle pass, uh, things in the seasonal quest line, uh, things associated with like the new gameplay mechanics we'd be adding as part of that season. Mm -hmm. We really want to make sure these things feel like they're connected in one coherent experience for players when they log in and they play during the season. Right. And so then, so as part of that season, then to carry that theme forward, you're going to want to obviously have some sort of context or narrative around the season. Yes. Yes, that's absolutely right. So that leads us to the seasonal quest line. So one of the questions I see get asked uh, either like online or occasionally we'll see in like you know uh, like various chat channels uh, is just that like how how are we thinking about story as a as a with regards to like the live service and how are we extending the story of Diablo Four? And there's kind of like two approaches the way that we're looking at things. Uh, with regards to seasons, we're not going to be using this as an opportunity to expand upon the campaign story of Diablo 4. Right. You know, the, the, the campaign story of Diablo 4 featuring like Anarius and Lilith and the events of the, uh, of the Wanderer, those events are really going to be told over the course of our expansions, our post-launch expansions that we're not talking specifically about today. You know, but that's really where the, the, the high-level narrative of Diablo 4 will continue to unfold. But that leaves our hand open to do really interesting things in the seasons. So if a season is supposed to have like a theme with a gameplay mechanic and, and, and other things associated with it, it allows us to have like one really engaging seasonal quest line that manages to deliver on like a self-contained story that's going to guide the player through like again the mechanics and the themes of that season. 
So like these are still like really big events that are happening in the world of Sanctuary, where the player is going to be able to like step in the role of the Wanderer and like kind of go and, and help people and like and, and explore interesting mechanics. Right. So you're not bound. You're the ideas around the season are not bound by the campaign. You're you you're basically creating quest lines in the open world that can be completely different and completely. Uh, you know, it's not, it's not constrained to, it has to be about the Inarius and the story. It can be about anything that's sort of interesting you want to play into in the open world, right? Absolutely. So if, for example, uh, we had a season theme for the first season, which, again, we will not be discussing today, folks. We're going to save <laughs> season one to talk about a little bit later on. Yeah, we plan on talking about season one after launch. That's right. Uh, but let's say, for sake of argument, that the first season was, uh, the theme was about zombies. Which it is not. No, this is a false <laughs> premise, okay? But let's just say for sake of argument that it was about zombies as the theme. That means that, like, things would be showing up in the battle pass might be related to some, like, zombie stuff. The season quest line might be about, like, rising of zombies throughout Sanctuary. Like that, we try to make sure these things all feel connected. So the season quest line is going to introduce new characters, uh, like, great voice acting, uh, memorable quests and experiences will guide the player through the season. That's the way that we're looking at things. And so then that also then... I feel like I'm doing your job, actually. Am I doing your job? I apologize. No, I'm, no you're, you're doing great. Oh, thanks, Adam. You're doing amazing. Um, <laughs> <laughs> thank you for the daily affirmation. Uh, I'll get 20 bucks now. later. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I, I'm just curious. I think, like, so, like, when you think about the theme, you know, um, that obviously not, goes beyond story construct, but also goes into the mechanics. Like, how do you think about gameplay, yes? Absolutely. And that brings us to the next major thing I want to discuss, which is fresh gameplay. Oh. This is when I would. This is the, the greatest. Yes, yeah. 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 yeah, so fresh gameplay. So with every new season, obviously we'll be introducing new story content, which I already described, uh, and then we want to introduce new mechanics and gameplay for players to engage with over the course of that season. So this comes down to things like uh, just new power for players to earn or ways to experience the growth of their character. Things are going to modify and change the way they're going to want to approach building their character every season. This goes beyond meta changes or like balance and tuning and things like that. It really comes down to like just at like wholesale like new features and things that are going to be available for the duration of that season for players to experience. Mm. And then at the at the, uh, the termination of the season, when the season is over, uh, these sorts of features are going to uh, be retired uh, to be considered for again in the future if we like them or not. Uh, but for now, we want to make sure that we're kind of maintaining a certain level of uh, of parity across the game. We're not kind of creating layers of like cruft and distraction from the core Diablo experience, which we already feel is tuned very well. So yeah, we're really excited to talk about those a little bit more in the future, but you can expect like exciting new features and gameplay to engage with between new monsters and mechanics, uh, things for players to craft or do, change their gear, or just change their skills. So we're really, really excited about that stuff in the future. And then when you think about seasonal stuff, we talk about, you know, the when you look at, say, Diablo 3 has the chapters that you go through to get Hagrid's gift and those yeah. sorts of things. So that there's a sense of progression through a season. And we, we've obviously talked about the battle pass and, and, and how the battle pass will be in our previous blog around this stuff as well. But it's good to clarify again. So when you think about not just like, okay, I have a seasonal narrative, I have a seasonal mechanic or gameplay hook now, but how do I think about progression within a season? Sure. So, great question. Uh, so, when we're thinking about seasons, we want to make sure we are creating new opportunities for long-term progression. Uh, the first version of that that we want to talk about, really, is the season journey, which does make a return from Diablo 3. So, inside the season journey, uh, the player is going to have an opportunity to complete a number of different objectives that are tied to mechanics, uh, story goals, or other things that are happening during the course of the season. I think we might actually have a, an image for the uh, for the season journey we can maybe pull up as well that might help me explain some parts of this. I think we hid the zombie stuff though, so there's no zombie. There's stuff. no zombie no stuff. Zombie in this. stuff. <laughs> yes. No so, zombies. Yeah, yes. Uh, please note the top secret <laughs> labels for this because I uh, realize there is no image we can show that doesn't start to give away some of the things we're doing in season one. Too bad. You're gonna be able to talk more. We'll talk more about that a little bit later on. But here in the season journey, players are able to complete a number of these objectives as I already called out. Objectives are separated into chapters. Uh, one of the big changes that we made as part of the season journey is we've ensured that now players don't need to actually complete every one of the objectives within mm. a chapter in order to advance. They can choose to go back and still complete. Oh, just, so if I go ahead. Yeah, it's it's so it's it's pretty different than if you're a player of Diablo three and you're going through season journey. If if you remember, like going you going through each chapter required you to finish every single little bit of it before you could progress to another chapter. So this one obviously a little different in how you kind of approach it because you don't have to do every single thing. You can actually complete it beforehand by doing most of the objectives and kind of choosing specifically. Yeah, like if I'm not a PvP player, 
I don't have to do the PvP objective to progress through the journey, right? That's correct. If we have an objective that would send you to like the Fields of Hatred, you wouldn't have to go there to complete that one. You could do the other objectives associated with the season instead. Got it. So when you're going through and you're, uh, you're kind of completing the season journey, you're going to earn rewards for completing the objectives, and you'll also earn some big rewards at the end of each chapter, mm. where you're going to get uh, like packs of, uh, of like crafting materials and items, and you can also end, uh, unlock actual uh, legendary aspects that will go into your Codex of Power. Oh, nice. So not season. just earn through dungeons, you can earn through the, through yeah, the journey. Yeah, a different set of, uh, of aspects, in fact, will be available through the Codex of Power in this way. And some, nice. of the new, and some of the new legendary powers we add in every season will also be made available through this method. So you'll still be able to find them as item drops, of course, but you can start be able to experiment and play with them pretty early on through these drops. Uh, and then uh, the last thing I think is worth talking about here is every time you complete one of these objectives, you're going to also be earning favor. Uh, which is a uh, kind of an experience system that's used by the battle pass. But uh, with, with that, otherwise, you get like little drops from completing the objectives and big drops of that also from completing the chapters. Uh, but you know, when it comes to long term progression in the battle pass, like, hey, would you mind maybe walking us through some of the, how the battle pass works? Yeah, absolutely. So I know there's been a lot of questions about the battle pass, so let's talk through it today. Um, so this is the seasons tab, and this is going to be, you know, the hub for all things seasons under that. Top secret label. Um, you can see the the uh, season journey, um, and then at the bottom here, you can see the actual battle pass. And what you're seeing is a mix of the free tiers and the premium tiers of the battle pass. The way that you progress the battle pass is, like Joe mentioned, um, with uh, by earning favor. And there's two sources of it. Uh, you get it from the season journey, like Joe Manson mentioned, but you also get it from leveling up and playing any seasonal character. Um, so there's three levels of the battle pass. There's the free track, um, which like the name implies, uh, you don't have to pay for, everybody has access to that. Uh, the premium track, which is roughly 10 US dollars, depending on you know, where you are in the world. And then there's the accelerated track, which is just like the premium track, but it has uh, includes 20 tier skips. It's you know folks who might have gotten a late start and a special cosmetic. And that one is roughly $25 USD, depending on where you are in the world. Um, but let's talk a little bit more about the free and premium tracks. Um, so the free track has 27 total tiers. And what you're primarily getting from the free track are, are what's called smoldering ashes. And the smoldering ashes are going to be like the currency that you use to unlock seasonal blessings. Um, so the seasonal blessings are different um, buffs you can get that will help accelerate your progress through the season. So you can see, for example, here, um, you know, plus 3% uh, to XP earned. That's going to help players, you know, level up again, level up multiple characters. Um, and all of these are really just meant to help players through that seasonal progression, through that seasonal journey. Uh, it's important to note, though, that, you, you know, there is a secondary level requirement on every free tier of the battle pass that contains uh, smoldering ashes. So, for example, if you were level one and you bought, you know, a bunch of tier skips and hadn't played yet, you wouldn't be able to access the smoldering ashes and spend them um, until you had actually like leveled up a character and met those level requirements. And this is to, you know, prevent folks from buying a ton of tier skips and keep everybody on a level uh, playing ground. So that is. I had a question about that actually. So. Yeah. There's, there are no smoldering ashes available in the premium track of the Battle Pass, right? That is absolutely correct. It is um, the, all the things that affect gameplay are only in the free track. Hmm. Okay. And so that basically, that's we've said like our, it's always cosmetic based. So there's no, you know, you can't pay for power in Diablo 4 because as you saw, the, the stuff, the, the season blessings are on the free track and they have a level requirement. So you actually have to play to get to a certain point. So right. it keeps everybody in the level playing field. Right, right. You may not uh, pay for power in uh, Diablo 4. Um, so yeah, let's talk about next the, the premium track. So like I mentioned, $10 USD, depending on where you are in the world. And this contains um, 63 total reward tiers. So you add that to the 27 from the free track, you get the 90 total tiers, 90 tiers. in the battle okay. pass. Yes. Um, it, there is a ton of value in that um, premium track. So you get uh, two full armor sets for every class, um, and they're really themed to the season. They're meant to be like a celebration of that season's theme. Um, and 
uh, and there's other stuff in there. There's the seasonal mount, there's the seasonal mount armor, which you can see here on this screen. And then there's just like a bunch of fun other little cosmetics like uh, role-playing clothing. Um, you know, for example, we have like a, a big, you know, pair of white bloomers in there. Um, so there's lots of fun stuff to find in the battle pass. No, that's what I wear when I role-play. <laughs> Yeah. I think that's actually a really fun idea, though. So, like, <laughs> it's not like, not necessarily like big armor or things, but just more, more other stuff. So if you want to like play a particular role, like yeah. there's options for some of that stuff that you'll find. And you can mix yeah. all and match all of it. So you know you can create all kinds of uh, ways to express yourself. What's nice is that you just said there's 90, 90 tiers, and a season is three months, right? So you have quite a lot of time. You have essentially 120 days to do 90 tiers, which seems doable. Like, yeah, we like want a, it to be achievable. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Okay, great. Uh, I want to call it one thing also, and then we were looking at that image before, there's that top secret label on the left. Yeah. Like that is ex like we that is explicitly a link that we're bringing to some part of the season journey as well. Mm. The only reason it says top secret there is because it's got uh, language in there that I do not want to make sure that anyone is able to read to give away what's <laughs> happening in season one. Exactly. Otherwise people will know about the zombies. Yeah, otherwise exactly. people will know about <laughs> it's not a zombie season, Ron. <laughs> you use the example, I, Joe. That's I, on you. That's I was just me. trying to pick something, okay? <laughs> I'll say something that season of the Circus next time, whatever. So, actually, that's actually it could be kind of yeah. cool, like a devil of circus sort of feel. All right, I'll talk to people. Scary about clowns. It's scary clowns, clowns, yeah, for sure. Um, so, yeah, okay, cool. Yeah, it's nice to uh, it's nice to get a little more information on the battle pass, and, like out there, right? And so, okay, so we had, we talked about progression. Yeah. Uh, we talked about in, both in the season journey and in the awesome battle pass. And so now, when we think about what the seasons also provide, is like. Obviously, you know, we're going to get we're hearing about balance. We're going to be mm -hmm. hearing about, yeah. hey, how do we improve people's experience based on what we saw in the previous season? Um, and actually, that, before we get into that, can I, if I can interject. I'll steal one of your questions right, from Q&A. Go, 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 go right ahead. Oh, yeah, all right. So one of the things that comes up, I get a lot on my Twitter feed is around, hey, how do I think about, you know, Diablo 3 seasons, I, there, and uh, Kagan said it earlier about, like, your seasonal character. That notion of do I have to re-roll to be to get into and experience the season and experience the, the narrative wrapper, to experience the mechanics, to experience the progression. Basically, do I have to start a new character? Uh, yeah. So Diablo Four is balanced around the idea of trying to make sure that that uh, that level up experience from one to one hundred is really engaging and fun mm -hmm. uh, and very punchy when items drop for you. That your power progression feels a certain way as you play. Uh, so you do, as a result of that, we do balance around the idea of playing over the course of a quarter character, right? And you can go, you can play a lot longer than that if you want, absolutely. Right. Right. We want to make sure it feels really good to play inside that nine-day period. We do, we are going to be having character, uh, players uh, like re-roll and make new characters with every new season and be able to experience the uh, the growth of uh, of their character over the course of each of those uh, those uh, quarters. And I think you might have said it, but just because you talk really fast, I want to make sure it's really clear. How dare you? <laughs> <laughs> no one has ever said that about me. I am a fast talker and you beat me. So True. the notion around <laughs> though that um, you basically have to complete the campaign at least once before you can truly experience the season, right? Yeah, that's true. Actually, there's a couple things that you, well, so once you unlock a couple things, you'll you'll have them for your account from that point forward. I can just kind of maybe just yep. throw all that right in right now. Yeah, I mean, we get so many questions about it. I think it'd be good if we clear Yeah, sure. Out, so. so, okay, so, uh, so first thing is, when you complete the campaign on any character, whether you're playing in the hardcore uh, mode of the game or the normal mode of the game, no matter what difficulty of the game that you're playing and you beat the campaign on, from that point forward, every character that you make, you're going to have the option to skip the campaign as part of the, playing that character. So if you play the campaign as part of the uh, this, this preseason period before season one begins, and you finish it, when you start playing in season one, you can choose to skip the campaign as part of your playthrough, mm. which means you get to experience the new seasonal content right away. Otherwise, you can still choose to play through the campaign in seasons, uh, but you'll need to finish the campaign content before the seasonal content is going to begin for you. So just things to think about as you play. So that's the first thing you get as an, like kind of an account level unlock for your character as you play. Right. Uh, the second is when you're playing through the campaign, you're going to reach a point in the story where you're going to unlock your first horsey. And when you get your first horsey, ah uh, horses, ah uh, uh, horses. And once you unlock your first horsey, uh, you're then going to have the uh, the ability to basically mount up with every one of your characters from that point forward, including characters you might have already rolled at that point. Having unlocked it once, you've got that as an account level achievement effectively for, your, uh, for yourself. You'll be able to start like future seasons even. I can yeah, just like start a new character. Got to get my right. horsey. Level level one after skipping the campaign or even playing through the campaign in the following season, you're gonna be able to like just go ahead and mount up right away. My horsey's in my cave with me. 
Yeah, your horsey baby. Yes, your, the horsey that died is then going to immediately revive and then you're going to play with the horsey right Zombies. Oh my god. Spoiler. We have showed the video. People know. Okay. okay. Um, zombies, if, honestly, yeah. though, if I, if I spoiled that moment, then I do deeply apologize and we but, should put spoiler uh, warnings on these things. I think things. that Kagan brought up like, spoil, like zombie horses now is theme specific. I think that goes leans right into that seasonal theme. Uh, yeah. Pivoting. Yeah, sign, yeah, absolutely. Three sign, weeks before lunch. Yeah, sure. Sound off in the comments if you want zombies. <laughs> <laughs> Let's hear it. Um, okay, so that's the, the second thing. You'll have access to your mount that you unlock. And then the last thing is that there's, a, as you're playing through the, uh, as you probably played as part of like the open betas that we've done, uh, and we will see again in SummerSlam, uh, you'll be finding these altars of Lola throughout the world. Mm. Sur SummerSlam. What did I say? <laughs> SummerSlam. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay. Server slam. Completely a slip, everybody. It's nothing to do with SummerSlam. So yeah, yeah. Uh, so yeah, during the server slam, wow, I really did, didn't I? Uh, so during the server slam, uh, you're going to be finding altars of Lola throughout the world. And when you collect these, you get two things. One, yeah, you're beginning renown, which is going to be uh, basically used to uh, get a number of different, uh, you know, uh, rewards for your characters on the uh, on that realm uh, within that from that zone. So new skill points, new healing potion charges, things like that that you got a chance to see before. Right. Uh, and the, but you also get a permanent stat boost, right. you know, for all characters on your account. One of the main reasons to go after the altars. Yeah, right. But we don't want you to need to necessarily go after them every single quarter. Uh, to sure. go and collect all of these. We think it's really fun, particularly the first time, to go and find all of these things. Right. So once you get that stat boost the first time, that stat boost is going to apply to all other characters in your account from that point forward. Right. Yeah. So you don't have to get those to get over and over again. And when it comes to Renown, you don't need to go get every alt of Lilith to finish off the Renown track in each one of these zones. Sure, it's like the season journey. There's You, you don't have to do everything on the Renown track to get all the Renown. You can do it. I, maybe I want to do... Maybe Strongholds are my favorite feature. Or else I can lean into Strongholds or whatever. So, But what you're saying is... Hey, I played the campaign. I found all these altars of Lilith the yeah. first time, and now when we go into a season, they be, are hidden again. But I still keep all the buffs I got the first time, all the things that are permanent, like the plus two intelligence, plus two. Yeah. God, God knows I need plus two intelligence, but and plus two strength and what have you. But the idea of going and finding an altar to add more renown to the pool to progress. I can still do that. Like Absolutely. I, still, I can still go find them if I want to. Yeah, and you get a little bit of experience for doing it as well. So yeah, they're still kind of fun to stumble across as part of your regular play experience within a season. You just don't have to get them all again if you don't want to. There's other things you can do instead. Okay, so yeah. I think we covered the, what's, what sticks around. That's right. Season. So that's great. But like the entries in your Codex of Power are going to reset, so you're going to have to go find those uh, those aspects again. Go like to the dungeons. Yeah, go to the dungeons again. So yep. yeah, those are the things you're going to reset. Yep. Great. Um, okay, so that definitely great long term. That was really yeah. on topic, actually, in terms of long term progression, because it actually is long term progression. It, it, yeah, by by the letter of the law, it's long term progression. <laughs> so yeah, it draws hundred percent correct. Thank you. But when you think about what else the seasons provide an opportunity yeah. for, like you, you talked about, like all these things. Okay, we have a new quest line, we have new mechanics, we have all this progression. But it's also an opportunity to kind of react to player feedback and also what you're seeing in terms of the data coming in, in terms of balance or mm -hmm. things that maybe we need to smooth out and. and and sand down. Yeah, absolutely. So we know that you know operating a, so you know, operating a, a live service game with, with Diablo Four after the game launches and seasons come out, you know that is going to be basically it's it's the best versions of this are always a conversation with the player base as we play and a conversation with the community as we play. So as we're going to be receiving feedback and we're seeing how certain features and in, in, in content is performing, that gives us opportunities to sort of like respond to that feedback and react to it with updates to the game. Now you know things take lead time, so once we if we see uh, immediately after launch, that there's a, there's something that we could get and maybe make an improvement on. It's up to it, like immediately and very quickly turn around like big changes. But we want to make sure that we are we are carefully iterating to make Diablo 4 the best version of itself that it can be as we go. So. Yeah, and this is like a, it brings up to to the point like where we just had betas and we we literally took the feedback that we got from the community, which we you know were obviously super appreciative of because it just makes a better game in the end of the day. And people will actually be able to experience those changes from the beta in, in the server slam uh, right. uh, weekend, this, this coming weekend, uh, because of that feedback. So players providing feedback on our forums, on Reddit, social media, we're always reading through all of that stuff. Uh, to, to have that, so yeah. And I think it's worth mentioning too in terms of the way that like in order to do, uh, to have a game that has seasons all the time in sort of this, sort of like having quarterly seasons, you, you're you not like once we start, like once season one launches, we start season two. Like season two has to be pretty much like very much in flight. Mm -hmm. And that's what I think Joe was talking about around the idea that we want it, we're gonna be as responsive as we can, so if there's a bug, or especially if it's something we can fix on the server, like we'll do things quickly. Yeah. But if there's a big change, it may take a season to get there just because 
Season two is already mostly in the can by the time season that's one That's how is game development works, everyone. What? Yeah. <laughs> You're developing things ahead of time? Yeah. Unbelievable. That's why we know we have zombies. Um, and so, the, but just something in terms of patience and understanding is like the way that you have to build seasons is you're basically having two seasonal teams that are leapfrogging each other with like, you know, we kind of call it the odd team and the even team to be able to be able to keep up that pace. And so that's why I was like, oh, I saw this thing in season one. It's definitely addressed in season two. It may not if it's big enough. It may be that it, season one thing we saw is in season three because it was big enough to require that time. Yep. So just that's absolutely right. Just understand how that's all working. Yeah, so like reacting to bug fixes and other things, that's going to be another really big part of the live service team's job, right? So like everything we're doing within seasons, we want to make sure that we're constantly responding to that kind of feedback from players and kind of making the game better as time goes on. Well, the other part of the season is like, you know, we've got a lot of positive response on our character creation. Um, and it would be great to get Kagan back in to talk about sort of how we think about customization during the season, because we know there, like maybe talk a little bit about what you can actually find in the world, but also you know what we're excited about with the shop. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, the the game is full of hundreds of incredible uh, transmogs, you know, that you'll unlock just by salvaging gear. And the transmogs in the game really give you this um, this power, this sense of like visceral power progression for your character. Right. Um, and so they, they're meant to really like bring that to life, grounded in Diablo's story and its mm -hmm. world and its lands. Um, and what the shop offers is a lot of um, diversity. So, like the way that we wanted diversity of like the fantasies sure. that you can uh, that you can experience and that you can express. So, the way that we wanted to support the development of the seasons was to, you know, add things to the game that players would appreciate. You know, to create art and beautiful things that are grounded in Diablo 4's world and its its uh, its art style but provide this like array of class fantasies. And um, so for example, if you wanna be like a thunder goddess as a sorceress, or you wanna be a big barbarian that like rips the tongues out of your enemies and very, puts them on yes, your armor. That was very specific. Right? That was very specific um, though. That's good. Yeah. Slightly unsettling, but yeah. very specific. Yeah. You, you can, the, you know, the shop is gonna help provide a lot of this like diversity in the types of fantasies. And then you can take all those pieces and mix and match them with the cool stuff that you find in the game um, to express yourself all kinds of ways. And yeah, I think one everyone. fun thing about this too, like players got a chance the like I saw- tongue ripping? Is that the fun thing? Is that Absolutely. Yeah, tongue Absolutely. ripping. But no, I was actually <laughs> gonna talk about, I was gonna talk about our, our previous betas. But we got a chance to see a lot of players making really cool looking customized characters in the game. And all of the gear they're collecting, it's still very low level gear. Like there's mm -hmm. other, there's a lot, there's much more stuff to go find. Wait, there's yeah, more Wait till you get 20? to the end uh, game. There's, well, there's a lot more looks and appearances to find as you're progressing through more what of the I, game. One of the things I love about the the equipment that's in the game is that we actually do regional themed uh, um, armor and stuff. Oh, such. here we go. Oh, this is not. Here's our to, side by this, side. This is not my to my point, but it's fine. <laughs> it's good to speak to your point. Maybe all I was going to say quickly before, so I, so okay, you can come back and talk yeah. about this. But it, I just think it's really cool that we have. Like regional looks, like mm. the notion of like, oh, yeah. there's a cause, you know, there's like a how's our look, and there is a fractured peaks look, and yeah. and that kind of thing. That is kind of interesting. That when you go into a particular zone in the world and you start collecting loot, you're actually picking up pieces that are of that zone, so you can actually dress more like a person from that zone if you wanted to. That's right. Yeah. Particularly at the legendary gear when you're leveling up 100. percent Yes, yeah, so there's a lot more to discover even after that as you get into world tiers and more. Did you want to, Keg, you want to talk us through some of the examples? Yeah, let's here? take a look at some of the shop armor. This is tongue ripping, right? Yeah. Uh, like, no, you no, can see no. blood right out of their mouth right there. Right out of mouth. I don't it's know if be. the names are final, <laughs> but this guy, I think his name is Death Raven, um, <laughs> the shop guy. Um, but yeah, as so you can see, you can see um, sort of like a uh, oh, side by side of uh, in game armor for the barb versus like a shop armor. I think I just want to, uh, one thing, I, I think it's so funny that we we accidentally got these really awesome poses for the in game armors. <laughs> I know. And all the, all the shop armors are just a person standing just dead pan. <laughs> Like this was, He's I checking call, his this look wasn't, in the mirror. This like, wasn't completely again. intentional, but it was a funny It was totally an happened. accident. It's because yeah. two different teams made the, yeah, yeah, the, yeah, the pictures. But yeah. <laughs> It's just funny, it's all. Um, but yeah, le like let's look through some of the other side by sides. Um, again, the she's very excited to have found the, the armor. Like, oh, I'm 
from here. Yeah. <laughs> um, and then we have uh, one of my favorites from the shop there. Oh, yes, and this is a uh, rogue side by side. So you can mm -hmm. see, I think uh, the, ro the shop rogue here is called Death Walker. So keep an eye out for um, tons of really cool, diverse I love fantasies the tacits. in the shop. I love the tassets on the in-game armor, and I love the pauldrons on the uh, the shop armor. You like, used the word so tacit. Cool. I didn't. Know There's that. honestly I like I I remember fancy games the for MTX time. is <laughs> focused on collection, right? Like it's it's not like we're trying to like put only the cool stuff in one channel or the other. There's stuff. There's awesome stuff to collect from the game and the shop. And, that, and like you said earlier, like you can mix and match, create your own mm -hmm. fantasy, which is really uh, cool. See, now so. we're talking my language with a necro. But like, for example, to, if I really like the in-game look, but I, I want that uh, the shop helmet, like when I buy that armor set, I can take that helmet and apply it to my in-game if I wanted to, yes? That's right, and you can dye everything. Oh, and so the wardrobe, like, I can actually recolor mm -hmm. it in too. Yeah, you can dye everything from the shop and in the game. Um, I think there are eight colors in the dye palette, so yeah. Nice. Yeah, if you haven't had a chance to check that out during uh, during Server Slam, you should make sure that you get a chance to play the wardrobe and try dyeing some gear. Yeah. Yeah. So that's customization. And then one more thing is related to customization, not tied to uh, appearances and looks, which I think we already have a good coverage on. Uh, but you will also be adding, we'll be adding new like legendary powers, like I called up before, and also new unique items mm. uh, with every new uh, every new season. Make sure there's like new builds and uh, and ways to kind of like create customized characters. And those will stay; those aren't seasonal. Those yeah, are those will be going to the eternal realm as well as the seasonal realm, and they are going to be evergreen. They're going to be uh, they're going to be there after the season is over, which continues to add to the pool. And so, speaking of evergreen, like that's true. Like there's potential to add side quests and things like that. Like mm -hmm. there's ways to continue to enrich the open world through seasons that will actually stay as people sort of move from the season into the eternal realm or to the next season, yes? Yep, 100%. We are going to be looking for those opportunities to kind of continue to add to the world of Diablo 4 and continue to build out Sanctuary. These are things that we're really excited about as a team. And we never, actually, I think maybe that might have been the first time someone's mentioned the eternal realm, but like, hmm. that is the intention, much like Diablo 3, that a seasonal character will you know, be in the season uh, playing everything that we've been talking about so far, and then when that season ends, that character will then move to the Eternal Realm where it will live on and you can choose to play there or you can choose for the next season roll a new season, new seasonal character and go again. Yeah? That's absolutely right. So the characters will get merged down in the Eternal Realm at the end of the season, giving you an opportunity to take some of the stuff that they collected over that period of time and then build a new characters as part of the next season. Yeah, there's no reason to feel like, um, like to shy away from starting a new character on the season um, because you will retain all of that progress. Absolutely. But, yeah. Okay, cool. Um, and so what about um, when we think about when I play the main game outside of a season, mm -hmm. we know we have capstone dungeons to be able to change my difficulty tier. Mm -hmm. We know that at the end there's some mysterious level 100 boss that I want to try to get to to get you know max out and prove I can beat this level 100 <laughs> boss at level cap. Like, are there other things within seasons that are kind of like that, or how do I think about that sort of notion about like? This sort of looking to, my, to the horizon of what I want to do. Well, once again, Rod Ferguson, I couldn't ask for a better tee up in this case. <laughs> Let's discuss the idea of aspirational <laughs> challenges. So, with every season, we want to continue to build upon the end game and the goals that players can have for themselves with every season of Diablo 4. You know, and we've got some particularly big ideas as we go through the first couple of seasons when the game uh, when the game launches. So, with every season, but we do want to continue to add these these really really pinnacle challenges for players to go and engage with. Pickle challenges. Pin <laughs> pinnacle challenges. Pinnacle. I think said, I, I, I pickle honestly challenges? heard. We all heard pickle zombies challenges. and pickles. Is, yeah. 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 All right. There okay. Well, fair enough. Fair enough. All right. So Throwing some mayo in there. <laughs> at some <laughs> sandwich. With See, this is the this is the level of respect that Joseph Pipe wants as a game director gets on Diablo. Uh, I'm looking gonna, forward to the pickle challenges. I'm saying. Yeah, same. <laughs> okay. So basically. Uh, we want to make sure that we've got these new big challenges for players to go and engage with every time we release the season. And, uh, and as we go, we'll continue to add more depth to this. But one thing we want to be very careful about is we're not looking to just sort of like arbitrarily continue to make the game longer and longer and longer and longer to play. Right. That's not the goal. Again, we are balanced around hitting level 100, uh, earning your Paragon points, getting all of your legendary unique items. That's, that's the, the real focus of uh, power progression for the player. We want to provide new and distinct opportunities for players to kind of express that power and new goals in the chase over the course of the season, yeah. without necessarily making like just more stuff that you have to go through in order to, uh, in, order to uh, in order to play the game. So okay. yeah, things we're very excited about: new awesome. bosses, new major encounters, new dungeons, new new things. And then as we see how players are reacting to the game as it is, we'll continue to build in that direction as well. Yeah, and I think it's it's really interesting when we talked about like side quests and things that take. It's also true kind of for the end game is that. We may use seasons to experiment with new in-game features, and then if it's working really well, we might decide to keep it. If it's not working quite so well, we may have it sh leave with the season, and then maybe bring it back later. And the, like it, what I like about the kind of quarterly seasonal 
flow we have going is that it allows us to experiment a little bit and see what works and what doesn't. And if it doesn't work, we know it's only there for three months. If it does work, hey, maybe we should have it stick around. So it's a great opportunity to try stuff out. Absolutely, particularly as it relates to content too. It's like you should be able to bring in like these really tough encounters and different bosses and things of that nature. Uh, and then these mechanical features, as we see how they perform and we see how players react to them, we may or may not decide to keep them on to your point. And if they're, if they're particularly popular, we decide to keep them in. Awesome. We awesome. want to hear from players about what's working, what they're enjoying, what's, you know, and also, you know, what kinds of fantasies they want us to make in the shop. So let mm -hmm. us know anything that you want, gameplay or um, from the shop and battle. Yeah, it's like I said earlier, this is ultimately going to be a conversation. And as we see how players are actually playing Diablo 4, that's going to, that's going to help us advise us on how we want to build Diablo 4. Uh, corpse exploding necro look. I'm looking for a corpse exploding necro I think, look. I think you covered. Oh, okay. You're gonna have to stay tuned for a future season. <laughs> okay. Good yeah. know. And I, I will say, like, I know we glossed over it really quickly, but we were talking about like meta changes and things like that, and like balancing and whatnot. That is included in the feedback. That mm. is incredibly important for yeah. hearing from players related to that. Um, yeah, I don't want to skip over that either. That's, thank you, Adam, for calling that out. So, <laughs> you know, if Diablo Four is a game about choice, we want to make sure that we don't allow uh, balance issues persist so long that they start to kind of interrupt or disrupt that choice that we're trying to provide for players. We don't want like any one particular to build to feel so powerful that there's not a reason to push up to play other builds yeah. within a season. So we want to make adjustments to make sure that like you know player uh, builds that might not be seeing as much play and you know get uh, uh, buffed and adjusted appropriately to make sure that they do see more use as time goes on. That is important to us. We will be making those changes on a regular basis. Yeah, we don't want one way to play. We want every class and to have builds that all are equally as effective in terms of being successful. We don't want to be like only whirlwind barbarians can succeed, so only everybody's playing. Yeah, that's right? the ideal. The reality is that there, there some every every season will be like something that's a little bit more powerful than something else. Sure. We're just want to make sure that the uh, you know the, the distinction the the, uh, the the divide there is not so great that it feels like you're making the wrong choice mathematically to ever play anything beyond whatever's considered meta for that moment. Right, well, right. it's not like RPG players are min-maxers at all. They never, they never try to do the most with the least ever. No. Um, and, <laughs> Joe, Joe, like, dead <laughs> I'm not signing up for that. I think, it, like, this, I think for the, in the spirit of managing expectations and ripping band-aids off, I do think there's something we haven't talked about that we should at least say, Claire, knowing that we haven't talked about, which is leaderboards. I think the notion that I think people with Diablo 3 and even like D2R as an example, the main thing about the D2R season is a leaderboard. Um, and so just saying that with, in the early seasons, uh, at least for season one and two, there will not be a leaderboard. Um, and that is something, again, as I said, a lot of stuff's already in flight. We understand the importance of leaderboards. We understand people wanting to be competitive in their PvE play, competitive in their build play, be able to show their mastery of certain things. And that's, so it's definitely on our backlog that that is a thing we're working towards to provide the player community with leaderboards as we move forward through seasons, but it's not something you're gonna see in season one and potentially not in season two. Again, I'm just managing expectations so you're not yelling at me on Twitter after. Uh, we hear you, we know we want it, we're working on it, it's just not gonna be there at launch. Or That's season right. one and two. Yep. That's right, so we'll, we're, we're gonna take the time to do them right, we'll bring them on as long as soon as we can. Awesome. Well, um, I know we have a lot of questions here and we've been collecting questions through chat and so forth like that. So I did want to go into at least a, a little bit of Q&A from, from people in chat. So if you guys have questions, feel free to throw them in chat and okay. we'll, we'll try to answer as many as possible. Um, but uh, I know we, we did touch on this really quickly uh, as we're collecting these questions right sure. now. But uh, when will season one launch? Mid July, mid to late July. Mid to late July. To late so, July. I mean, there, and the reason around the timing is two twofold. Um, one is we want to make sure that we launch this season, we launch it into the best state the game can be in to accept that season. We don't, you know, there's a launch of a game of this scale can there can always be some things that we have to work through and settle in. But two is just we again as as Joe talked about. Um, you need to be able to get through the campaign before you start the season. So by having enough time in the pre, what we call the preseason, and so in the preseason, Kagan, um, no battle pass because it's a preseason, but there will be a, basically a sort of a reduced scope shop, yes? Yeah, there will be some things you can buy. You can sort of get a sense of what we have. There's, you know, um, armor sets, mounts, and mount armors, and then there's some other cool things like emotes and um, headstones. So like if you die on the field of battle, you can leave behind a monument that is uh, special. Nice. As we said, hardcore players, careful of PvP. When you die, you're dead. Yeah, dead um, forever. Dead forever. Yeah. So, um, 
So, in the game. Oh, in the game. <laughs> no, 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 no. We come to your house. You know where you live. We don't have that kind of budget. <laughs> I like thought that was snow our. Crash. our I thought that was our butcher April Fool's thing. It, it is. Come it to is your house and we kill you. True hardcore mode. So that that is a popular question that we've gotten, where people were confused by, like, hey, if you die in hardcore, like, it, are you do you come back to life or do you just like start off like you know with no gear or something like that? Start no. again. Yeah, yeah. Start, start again. all over again. Yeah. Yeah, but that's and that's that's and in PvP too. People. But yes, and that speaks to something that um, you know as we talk about the shop and customization is one of the things is that when you buy a you know one of the things that's sort of different the battle pass as you talked about is the the armor and those sorts of things are class agnostic that when I buy something mm -hmm. or when I get something in the battle pass I can apply it to whatever class I'm playing. But the shop is different because the shop you can actually target. I can go and say, "Oh, I want this necromancer look," and it's not. And it doesn't go across. And it's very specific to like yeah. the necromancer fantasy. Right. Um, and, but it, yeah. and but it's not character based. It's account based. So if I, mm -hmm. for whatever reason, roll five necromancers, I can apply that armor to all five of them. Yeah. Right. All no, no. future necromancers that you ever create. Yeah, any, so any for the future. infinite rogue like me, um, <laughs> you know, it's it's gonna get. I'm gonna get a lot of value. Right. 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 Okay. Great. Um, all right, I'm gonna try to n pronounce these names, and uh, some of them are easy, thankfully. But I'm gonna try to include people. I was gonna say, like, he's like, I'm gonna well, try this, but are, Bob asks. That's a great, <laughs> good job, <laughs> Adam. You nailed that one. Great to uh, stop so. myself on the back there. Uh, so we have a question from uh, Negative Capable. Uh, if we get the premium battle pass late, is the favor retroactively applied? It is. Like okay. you will earn the favor, and then it will unlock the the tiers that, uh, like the premium tiers that. Um, you didn't unlock because you hadn't unlocked the premium battle pass yet. Cool. Yeah, like you'll still earn everything in the free track as well. Like you're kind of making mm -hmm. progress like the whole time. The whole time. It's a question yeah. whether or not when you get the premium versions, when you get to get all the premium rewards. You yeah. Then unlocked. it'll just suddenly unlock all those like locked premium tiers that you already went through. And the, and just a reminder, premium tiers just being obviously the cosmetics blessings mm -hmm. are part of the free. That's track. right. There are no. Yeah. yeah. There's no smoldering ash in the. Zip. Zero, mm -hmm. yep. no smoldering ash, no paper power. Yeah. In premium tiers, yeah. In there premium. And the, no, no, no paper power at all. Exactly. Yes. I'm just saying Period. no smoldering ash in premium tiers. Yes. Also true. Um, but th that's also, just to clarify, like, that's also true of the season journey, is that mm -hmm. if I, let's say, um, you know, I'm starting a new, I, I'm not getting the game until much later. It's season sure. two, and I'm buying the game at season two. When I play the campaign, in the background, it's tracking the the season journey accomplishments I'm doing while I'm playing the campaign. So it's not everything in the season journey is tied to like sort of open world seasonal play. It's also some things can be accomplished by playing the campaign. And so when I finish and I go into the seasons, all of a sudden ding, 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 a bunch of stuff in the season journey will complete, yes? Yeah, that's the expectations. You'll be able to move through that season journey a little more quickly if you start in the campaign. You might not be able to like finish every chapter as you go because there's going to be some things you have to kind of like, uh, like participate in the season quest line or the right. season mechanics in order to be able to really get. But you will be making progress the entire time. But I don't think your hypothetical case is likely to happen because obviously everybody is going to buy Diablo 4 <laughs> on, on or before launch. Right. So, yeah. It's a good call. Mm. <laughs> um, question from... <laughs> QR code right here. <laughs> QR code. If you would <laughs> like to... Oh. I did not see that when I said that. No, I'm, I'm even happier. Yeah. Um, question from Juck, Juck Lax. Uh, around what level will you end up getting to... Or to, to to the mount specifically. So um, the problem wasn't the name, it was the yeah, question. Yeah, it was itself. the question itself. I'm just trying to like work correct. It's just, um, I think that is around level 30 ish. Yeah. Yeah, it's around level 30 ish. That, it depends. Like, yeah, it really depends. Really depends. Really one of really these questions true. is going to be depending on how you play. Yeah. Are you yeah. open world playing and you're driving up your level before you do the golden path on yep. the campaign? Like, basically, the the horsey, yes, yeah, and pony. We use different names for these, <laughs> yeah. but the mount is unlocked as part of your campaign progression. Right. So you have to play the campaign at some point to unlock the mount. If you decide I'm not touching the campaign, I'm going to get to level 100 just in the open world. You will not unlock that horse. That's completely true. Yeah. Uh, question from <laughs> Tatu. Um, uh, are you going to move the altars each season? So we, j um, so they, they're in different locations every single season. Uh, right now, the plan is not to move them every season. That's something we've discussed as a mm -hmm. team. Uh, we'll see what the feedback is like. But right now, we we don't want you to have to rediscover the locations every time if you're looking for them. But we'll see how things adjust as we play. Awesome. Uh, Not hard for us to do. <laughs> yep. And just to mess with you, we might anyway. So <laughs> like, maybe now I will. <laughs> yeah, exactly. 
A uh, question from Slimy Saul. <laughs> uh, People need a good yeah, yeah, We need, yeah, more, we need more self-esteem in our community. I'm just telling you right now. <laughs> um, uh, what about seasonal cosmetics? Are they account bound? They are. So, like. Uh, if you unlock it, if you unlock a, a are you, I assume you're talking about the Shop and Battle Pass cosmetics. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, if you unlock a armor for your barbarian, all future barbarians that you ever make, and the, on the Eternal Realm, on the Seasonal Realm, uh, it's usable on all of them. Cool. Uh, Kiddo asks, it's easy. Okay. Do ashes transfer transfer over from previous seasons? Uh, no. So uh, with every new season, you'll be resetting and starting to go through your Ash collection once again. It's also like one of the things you, maybe we didn't call it, but like the season, because there's season blessings, there was actually one that was top secret. So there's, there'll be blessing, those blessings will we'll be playing with those. So yeah. there'll be season specific blessings and we may mess with what blessings are working or not. Again, it's part of the quality of life where we go like, hey, we see this as an issue or this is not working the way or we see another opportunity. So this is another place we can play every season. Um, question from Infernal Odin, uh, do you need to have the premium battle pass for the blessings? Uh, you, you do not. Yeah, you don't. That's why that's, the, that's the why ashes, the ashes are on the, free track. On, the, on the free track itself. So, and you need the ashes for the blessings themselves. And it's again, there's a two conditions. You have to have the favor to get yep. to those free tiers, and you need to have the level requirement so that you, um, again, so everybody is at the same place, kind of from a play perspective. So there's no way to accelerate that, and that you're somehow using tier skips to pay for power. You're not. It's because you have. It's on the free track, and you have to have a certain level requirement to be able to unlock that uh, those that ash to be able to use in the blessing. Um. It, uh... Oh, this is a long name. I'm not going to try. Uh, is every season to level one? Oh, I thought that was her name. Oh, I mean, that is all. A question I mean, from is every season. <laughs> oh my god, that is a long name. Uh, every season is uh, every season to level 100. I mean, the season is till to the point where the player decides they've hit all the goals they have for themselves. Till you cry, the uncle. But I mean, you <laughs> are going to start level one, and you are going to play level 100. You know, with a, if you choose to with every, uh, with every season. Sure. Uh, but it's again, it's up for a player to choose what goals they want to really go after. Uh, question from Wittels. Will shop items stay in the shop or will there be limited cosmetics too? Oh, that is a great question. Sorry. Um, so when items, you know, uh, the shop is actually personalized. Um, there's limited shelf space in there. So, you know, you'll see a set of, of uh, items in the shop and then they'll, they'll swap out periodically. So in preseason, once a week on Tuesdays, <clears throat> some new things will come into the shop, some old things will come out of the shop, but when things leave, they're not like put into a vault. They will come back into the shop fairly frequently. Yeah. And, and then and just to personalize the, we actually have a thing like recommended for you, which is one of the things that's really interesting is like when something leaves the shop, it actually goes into a pool of things that can be recommended. So if someone like Kagan, who's constantly playing Rogue, or somebody like me, who's constantly playing Necro, they'll actually say, like, hey, you seem to be playing a lot of Rogue. Here's some Rogue things that may either be new or something you may have missed previously, or, hey, there's some Necro stuff. And so it's one of the things that's really nice about the shop is it has a little bit of that, in, um, you know, um, intelligence, and then that has a sort yeah. of recommendation engine where it can go and say, like, hey, I noticed these kind of... You seem to... You know, you seem to be really interested in blood-looking things. Here's a new blood-looking thing, you know, that kind of stuff. So I think it, it's, it'll, be, it'll be a nice way to keep the shop fresh and interesting and actually tailored to the person. So so just to be, like, so in the recommend for you, like, Kagan's thing, her shop may look different with yep. Rogue, as mine would be filled with Necros, potentially. I mean, there'll be... Um, you'll get a mix, right, but, like, like it'll, it'll make... We want to make sure that the shop is... Um, serving you things that are actually interesting to you um, and that we're not like forcing you to scroll through lots and lots of pages to you know find the exact thing you want so but the, in the to answer the question uh, no when things leave the shop they are not gone for good they will rotate back in and the shop is trying to show you things that you want to buy yeah right. but there and there are like it's not just that section where things are being recommended you also have class specific area. Mm -hmm. So even if I'm playing Necro all the time, but I'm really curious, I'm about to go play a rogue, I want to go look at the rogue, Those that stuff's all there too. It's not like I'm only limited to the stuff that it's recommending. I can go browse the shop as well on, on other classes and such, right? That's right. Yep. Um, do you lose all season progress when a hardcore character dies? Uh, so the, the, the things you can put in the season journey are all account bound, so you won't lose that progress. But the things that you collect on your character, that stuff's going to go away. Yeah. So yeah. if you ha happen to find like really good gear or something, you're wearing it there, gone. Just gone. Right. 
Yeah. But, you're, but you're, you're, the chapters you've unlocked or the favor you've earned, <laughs> yeah, that's a that all stays. Absolutely, cr absolutely true. Yep. Uh, <laughs> yeah, that is true. Yep. And then um, <laughs> this is actually uh, something that we should clarify here because someone, so Tez Day was asking, I'm missing something or ashes. Is it still a pay-to-win mechanic uh, since you can advance 20 levels on pat on the pass by paying? The the thing that uh, you may have not caught was that there is a secondary requirement, which is you have to get to a specific level. That's right. Um, uh, if to to unlock that specific ash and and. and so Use even that. if you bust through those first 20 tiers by buying the accelerated pass, you won't have met the secondary level requirement on the free tiers that have smoldering ashes in them, so you won't be able to unlock them faster that way. Yep, exactly. Um, funny question from Tactica. When, when will we get Rod's hoodie in the shop? Um, Rod's hoodie has been in the shop, unfortunately. <laughs> I sent people there like, hey, if you want to go, go to this gear shop, and they only have smalls. Um, so technically, it's still there. Uh, if you want, if you can buy, if you're small, which I am not, um, we are very aware of some certain things that we have in the shop that are very popular. One was the the Lilith denim jacket with the hoodie sleeves that I think was uh, awesome a few couple of years ago that we didn't. I don't know why we didn't bring back. And we were literally just talking about this before the stream started too. Uh, yeah, exactly. And so <laughs> we know we we hear we hear the comments that I wear this because. In any interview that's required me to sit, I need to hide all the folds and stuff, so I use this as my shelter. But um, people like it, so I need to. Uh, we need to bring it back in the shop and get more stock. So um, that's where we are. Um, let's see. There is uh, a question regarding um, when you skip the campaign. Mm -hmm. From this, is from Master Barbarian. You're probably playing Barbarian. <laughs> uh, <laughs> no, it's not guaranteed. Shocker. <laughs> when you skip the campaign, what level do you actually start at? Level one. Level one. Every character you make at Diablo Four is going to start at level one. Okay, and I think I'm, I answered this wrong on Twitter, so you can you can correct me. When someone asked me when you skip the campaign, where do you start? I knee jerk said you start in the cave, and that's not true, right? When you skip the campaign, you start in Kyogre Shadow. Yes. So it, for for season one and for the preseason, when you always skip the campaign, you'll start in Kyogre Shadow. Might not always be in Kyogre Shadow. Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> Foreshadowing. Dun, dun, dun. I guess. Yeah. Sure. <laughs> You start in a grave as a zombie that you wake up and then you feel like a zombie thing. <laughs> Maybe it is. I don't know. <laughs> now I, people are just compl completely going to believe that. Like I know is well, that's a the fun. Though, is pirates and zombies from uh, here on out. Just don't get like heavily attached to the zombie idea because it's please, not happening. Please don't. <laughs> so so like, it's, it's, it's not happening. Uh, will there be unlockable mounts or cosmetics through defeating like gameplay challenges, or will those only be through the shop itself? Yes, uh, there are some mounts and other things you can collect, uh, like trophies, other like, and certainly like titles and things along those lines. That you will get from overcoming particular challenges throughout Diablo Four. So there's plenty of stuff to actually collect as well, it's not just even just like finding gear on the ground and picking it up and salvaging it. There's other things you'll get as like achievement level rewards mm. uh, for having completed certain kinds of content. And, and seasons will have new titles and new things like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, seasons can have like new titles uh, and like again the aspects or the things you'll be collecting as you play. Um, and then this is a question about the server slam stuff, which was uh, if you have the open, if they had the open beta app on PlayStation, uh, do they need to download a different one? The answer is no, you won't. Uh, here in like the next couple minutes or so, uh, you will be able two. to two minutes. Well, I, two ish minutes. Oh, uh, just two in ish case. minutes. Two ish minutes. Uh, please don't come after me at like twelve o'clock when it's like not available. Oh no, right you should totally there. Pez radar uh, on Twitter. <laughs> oh, please don't. Uh, but uh, PlayStation, uh, that app will actually automatically update uh, and apply all the changes. But it's a fresh start. You're starting it is, it is, level one. Yes, all your characters from beta do not move over with this server slam. You will have to start uh, uh, with fresh start characters. And, and, and to be clear, like. One good thing is this is a third opportunity to get, if you didn't get your wolf uh, puppy pack, um, you, this is another opportunity. So if you reach level 20 with any character during Server Slam, which you have 48 hours to do it, and, and you could probably knock it out on a Friday with a little no lifing, but um, level 20 to get your beta uh, puppy pack. And then we have a new reward around defeating a Shava at level 20. So the and it has to be level 20. Yep. Um, and so oh, um, look at this oh, fancy graphic. Now uh, the reward it's is like, it's like a it's car being commercial. Wait for it. Wait there for it. it. There so it the, is. to be super clear though, because I've had this question, it is not the horse or the horse's armor or the horsey or the pony. It is actually the claw on the back, which we call the Shava's the cry of a Shava or a Shava's the cry, cry. The cry of a Shava. The cry of a Shava. Because yep. when if you were declawed, you would cry too. But 
you have to beat a Shava at level 20. If you beat a Shava at level 19, no claw for you. That's right. Uh, you'll be the one crying, not a Shava. So <laughs> know, that was just mean. But, but what if I have friends who can like carry me through the combat and I can just go nope. there at level 9? You have no. to be level 20 to get oh. the claw. Like you can okay. beat a Shava, but plus don't be that person. Those are 11 people <laughs> who want, who need another level 20 to show up. Like do not, if you go early, you're just bringing the team down. Don't go early. Get to level 20. It's not that hard. And then and then represent. And then you'll get the, the cool new Mount Trophy. And it's an example of one of the other cosmetic types we have is Mount Trophies, but a lot of it is around achievements. Like we have stuff for PvP where you can demonstrate like I'm a, I'm a badass who kills other players and so you can have a certain Mount Trophy for that. So it, it's a cool new reward. Uh, it's just we want people to go in and so you'll have nine chances. So what, we're, what we've done is the game, um, Server Slam will start on Friday at uh, 9 a.m. And then, sorry, at noon, I apologize. Friday at noon, the game of Server Slime will start. And then you basically have till Saturday at 9 a.m. to get to level 20. And then at 9 a.m., we start a Shava every three hours. So based on that, you'll have nine chances uh, to kill a Shava. So those are your, your windows of opportunity. So highly recommend you spend Friday getting to 20 and then Saturday uh, trying to kill a Shava. And yeah. please, get to 20 before, don't be that person. Don't, yeah. don't there's, there's, down there's a, a lot of time to get to 20 and a lot more opportunities now compared to even the beta where uh, Shava only spawned four times that whole entire weekend. Right. Now you have a lot more opportunities to actually take down a Shava. Uh, it is more of a challenge, as we said before. Because... Fewer legendaries, lower yep, yep. level cap. Yep, we, it, can, it absolutely can be done on both world tiers, but if you're having a difficult time with a particular attempt, don't be afraid to step down to, uh, to adventurer tier. No shame. Even make it a little bit easier for no yourself, shame. potentially. None at all. Um, we, one last question before we, we, we will wrap up, because it, this gives an opportunity for people to start downloading uh, Server Slam, uh, which is uh, when you spend Smoldering Ash, can you re-roll that Smoldering Ash like onto like different blessings and so forth? Like, can you unspend it? Can yeah. you unspend it and put it on other blessings? Honestly, I'll have to follow up with that. Uh, with I will follow up on that. Oh, there we go. And I will provide an answer you on that. You stumped us. Yeah, <laughs> we've been stumped. We've nice. been stumped. Um, <clears throat> Uh, so, uh, just a reminder, Server Slam downloads will be starting here momentarily. It should so you have can, already started two minutes ago. Yeah, what are you doing? Uh, so, you should be able to grab it from the, the <laughs> Battle.net client, uh, from PlayStation, Xbox as well. Uh, and if you already have the beta clients, those will start to update automatically, so you'll be prepared for this weekend. Um, provide feedback on our forums. You can see all the amazing rewards here and so forth uh, for, for Server Slam this weekend. Uh, provide all your feedback on the forums. Uh, we'll be reading forums, Reddit, social media, and so forth. Uh, yeah, I think we should also... Uh, oh, the puppy. Uh, I've got to play this time. It's, it's, I, I was working uh, last time. I didn't get the puppy, so... You didn't hit 20 last time? I didn't. Like, I, I was working. I didn't play. <laughs> <laughs> like, I awesome. I mean, I think... Uh, to be clear, too, like, I just want to... Man again, as we talk about the realities of development, you know, we, I, I feel like the team did an amazing job responding to the feedback on the uh, open beta and being able to make all the changes that, you know, made for the dungeon and the font and, and all the stuff that, all the great feedback we had. And we still want that same feedback coming off Server Slam, but please recognize the game went gold a little while ago. Uh, we are 22 days away from launch, so our ability to respond in a really big way to feedback is going to be somewhat limited as we're kind of coming in to land this airplane, if you will. So uh, we're doing our best and we're gonna respond as best we can. But just in terms of the scope of changes, like we, we were able to do a lot coming off open beta, probably less off server slam. This is really meant to be, hey, we're getting ready to go live. We want our servers to, we wanna make sure our servers are ready for that. And so this is what this is about. We still want your feedback. I'm just saying, manage expectations. You may see the res results of that feedback more towards season one or such. So just something to be aware of. Yeah, so uh, lots lots coming up here this weekend, and lots coming up before launch as well uh, for, for Diablo 4. We're obviously really excited. This is actually, I, I will note, this is our last developer update live stream. One tier, one tier. Before launch. We will continue these yep. post-launch. Even if it's just you by yourself, we're talking. E yeah, I will just jump on a camera and deadpan for one <laughs> Walking hour. Walking over to Starbucks on your phone. <laughs> yeah. I imagine we'll be talking a great deal. Yes, yes. We've We've already, already spoken quite a great deal. And there's more. There's plenty more <laughs> where that came from. I haven't even said a fraction of what I could say. <laughs>
I mean, that's what it is to be paid by the word. Yep, yep it's true. <laughs> and uh, just another reminder that all the, the, the topics that we discussed today regarding uh, seasons, battle pass, and shop, and so forth, those are actually going to be available on Diablo4.com. Uh, we'll have a blog up uh, immediately after this stream uh, so people can actually take a look there and get more information or read more information if you happen to um, just jump in halfway through or something like that. Yeah. Um, or or we, we spoke too fast. Or it... Yeah, and you want to read it at your own pace, then that, that's a good place to go to do that. Side, side eyeing Joe side the whole time. Uh, but... I appreciate you, Joe. <laughs> I appreciate Joe. Joe. We all appreciate Joe. Joe's great. Joe's great. Uh, and at the same time, uh, the server slam information, we have a blog up for that as well. And that, again, starts at noon Pacific time, May yep. 12th. Noon. Yes, noon. So right noon up. Pacific time, May 12th. So we hope to see you guys there. In the U.S., Mother's Day weekend. Or Mother's Day like, weekend. Uh, Blessed Mother's Day weekend. Blessed Mother's mm -hmm. Day weekend in the, the U.S. And, and in some participating countries that have not already celebrated Mother's Day. I know. That's like, uh, yeah. Or will celebrate Mother's Day at a different date. But yes. Um, but yeah, thank you guys again uh, for tuning in for another Diablo 4 developer update live stream. Thank you again to this wonderful panel of guests, Rod, Kagan, Joe. Uh, we are super excited for launch of Diablo 4, Server Slam this weekend. Rod actually has a special treat for us here. <laughs> Wait, what? Uh, so, my wife got me the, you know, the button for, this is a thing that came out that's a 30 second dance party. So why don't we, why don't we end on a 30 we second? Will, we will end on a 30 second dance party. All so, right. Rod. Ready? Take us away. 30 second dance party. <laughs> Here you go. Bye everyone. <laughs> check out check out Server Slam. Server Slam, Server Slam. Please go to the graphic. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs>